Hi everyone, Dave Muskrat here. Uh, hi everyone, Dave Muskrat here. Well, we have another beautiful and sunny day. And um, this little segment that I'm offering is all about nature journals. We're actually gonna build a nature journal. And one of the things I like to use nature journals for is to, um, I like to bring my nature journal to my sit spot and I like to write down things that I'm noticing every day. And I also like to write um, things I'm thinking about. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wondering about something. Maybe I have a question about something. And also I like to draw pictures too of the things that I'm seeing. And I particularly like drawing pictures. That's a whole lot of fun. So to start out our time together, I thought I would share with you a song and my guitar. And this song is, let's see, what is it called? Uh, in My Sit Spot. That's what we'll call it. Or actually, I think it might be called Morning Light. So this is a Dean Martin song. And if, if there's some older audience out there, you probably know who Dean Martin is. And this is a song that was rewritten by some people and then rewritten again and rewritten again until finally it landed in my lap and there's a part that is a repeat after me the verse repeats after me and then the chorus is a sing-along so the chorus goes like this my sit spot my journal and me let's try that together my sit spot, my journal, and me. So every time we get to that part, we're going to sing it together. And during the verse, the rest of the song, there'll be space in there for you to sing along with me. You want to give it a shot? Let's try it. We'll try it again at the end of this segment, too, perhaps. And then we'll be a little more acquainted with it. Morning light. In my sit spot brings me out to greet the day with my three good companions. My sit spot, my journal, and me. Chickadee in a treetop sings a sweet melody with my three good companions. My sit spot, my journal, and me. Peeling bark from a tree. Making cups to boil tea. With my three good companions. My sit spot, my journal, and me. There it is, in all its glory. <laughs> That's a fun little song. Actually, I think that's the first time I've sung the song with a guitar, which is pretty cool. Um, so friends, here we are, Nature Journal 101. We are going to make a nature journal, which is super cool um, because one of the things that I really like about making something is that once you've made it and you can use it, you really, really appreciate it. Like how many books do you have that you use that you've never made? Well, I think you're going to appreciate this nature journal segment quite a bit. So I'm going to arrange myself a little bit so you can see what, what I'm going to be doing. And I have a sample of the nature journal that I put together for this segment. And there's an inside too, where all the paper is. So. Let's get started with some of the materials we have. And you know, if you don't have these materials right now, it's okay, don't worry about it. After you watch me go through this, you can get the materials together and then watch this again later on because this will be recorded and saved on the Facebook page. So you'll notice a few things about this nature journal. There's a cover, right? and there's pages on the inside. And then on the outside, there is birch bark. And it's all stitched together with 
uh, jute twine, which is a natural fiber. Can you all see that okay? Cool. So the first thing we want to do, we'll start with our paper, the inside, the part that we're gonna write on for our journal entries. And what we can do is take our paper like this, this is like regular blank paper, and fold it in half the long ways, like so. Now you can't see a lot of this, but that's okay, you'll have to use your imagination. There we are, paper folded in half. Now I chose a total of five sheets of paper. And when I fold that in half, how many pages will that make in our journal? We're basically doubling the paper by folding it in half. We started with five, and if we double five, we get 10. So there's 10 sheets in here. If you wanted to make a journal that you could write in for 500 days, you would need 250 pieces of paper to fold in half, and that is tricky. Then you'd have to learn how to make books, different types of books, but we can start with this. <laughs> so we need to poke holes in this paper now. We need a place to stitch together the cover and the inside of the book. So there's a few things you can use. You can use something that's sharp and pointy. Now, if you use something sharp and pointy like an awl, like a sewing awl, you really need to have, um, you definitely should have an adult with you for all of these things because we're going to be using scissors and some other things that will, that are potentially pretty sharp and could be dangerous. But if you use an awl, it kind of, I don't have one with me, but it's basically like a sharp pointy piece of metal and you poke it through things. And you can do that like awls are used for leather working and they're really great for stitching leather together if you want to learn how to make shoes or or maybe some clothing but we're going to use something else because i think an awl isn't the best tool for making holes in paper there's there are two things that i suggest one thing is a three hole punch like this thing you might have this laying around your house and basically how these work you slip it right in to where that those punches are and then you press down and punch holes in it but i'm going to use something a little different today i love this tool this is a hole punch and it's really it's i use it for leather working when i make shoes and other things and there's different sizes all around here and you can turn it to the size you want it could be like a little hole or a bigger hole a bigger hole i'm going to put it on the biggest hole that i have here and I'm going to have a peek at my piece of paper, and you can measure this if you want. I'm, I'm not really going to measure too much today, because this is really kind of a demonstration. I'm just going to like pick the halfway point, which looks to be about there. If I measure this, this is, this is actually eight and a half inches long. So I'm going to pick, I don't know maybe four and a half inches. We'll just make it easy like that. And then a little bit from the edge, I'm going to make another mark where I want the hole towards the edge and another mark with a hole towards that edge. So I've got like three marks. Those are going to be three holes. Now we're only going to do three holes on this today just because it's going to be a little quicker but if you have a look at the journal i made we'll just look at this side i have one two three four five six seven eight holes so i put a hole almost every inch all right now here we are we've got these parts marked out i'm going to use my hole punch to punch a hole right where i want it Sometimes you get to press down hard on them to get the hole. Ta-da! 
three holes. Perfect. Now, our journal needs a cover. So you can use a bunch of things for covers. I have here an example of something you could use. This is an, a box from a cracker box, like an old box. And you can use something like that. You kind of want something a little, a little stiff, a little rigid so that it holds the shape of your, of your journal, you know, much like a book. I chose to use a cardboard box. Now, here's how I did this. I folded my paper and put the holes in it. And I'm using this paper as a template or as a way to um, measure out how big the cover should be. So what I did here, really quickly, is I had a square of cardboard and then I traced with a pencil right around the edge, oh, this way, right around the edge to see exactly how big I wanted this to be. And now I'm going to cut that out. And if I did everything just right and I did my tracing perfectly, it'll be pretty close to the same size as those folded pieces of paper. Voila. Now, this part is really cool. So can you see on the outside of this journal what's on the outside? That is, you can see the inside is regular cardboard and the outside is birch bark. So what I did with this journal is I gathered some birch bark from a tree that had already fallen down. Because one of the cool things about birch bark is that even after the tree has fallen down and it's dead, the birch bark can still be used for crafts. And you can even weave baskets with it. That's really cool. And I peeled the bark off of a tree that had fallen. There's some of the birch bark. I don't want to peel it off of a living tree because the tree does need that bark to live. Um, it protects the tree. It keeps it healthy and keeps keeps uh, viruses and bacteria and insects from attacking the tree. So here I have a, a sheet that I gathered. And if you look closely, you may be able to see that I've already traced the size of my cover on it. I'm going to cut that out too. And then I want to show you a really, really cool trick with birch bark. Birch bark is real curly. It, it definitely has a mind of its own and it wants to do what it wants to do. And you know what I'm noticing too is that it's curling like that. That's the same way the birch bark wraps around the tree. So this birch bark kind of has a kind of the memory of what it feels like to be on a tree because that's how it grew. There we are, right about there. Now, we have a front cover and a back cover, but we only have one piece of birch bark. Something really cool about birch bark is it grows in layers. And if I'm very careful, haha, I can peel these layers apart. You have to be super, super careful and patient with this. But I, I just like found, I'll show you. I just found like a little spot where I could peel these apart. And I'm gently separating them and pulling them apart so that I can have two pieces the same size as my nature journal. So there we are. And if I hold it up to my cover, we are perfectly the same size. Now, this part 
is going to require a little bit of glue and I have some school glue and we have to glue this onto our cardboard. So I'm going to make some wiggly lines here. And I'm making wiggly lines of glue onto my cardboard so that, uh oh, my glue's not working great. There we are. So I'm making wiggly lines with my glue so that the glue covers a lot of different areas. Because I want this. Can you see that? I want this to stick nicely onto my cover. So for this particular cover, I'm going to choose to put the outside of the bark, which is this white, white bark. This is from a paper birch. I'm going to put this on the outside. So I'm going to put this side down. And you'll have to trust me because you can't see it all. There it is. My cover. There's the inside of the cover. Oh, you know what you can also do? You can use this as the outside and cover it up with the bark so that you don't have advertisements inside your book. But that's okay. We live and we learn, right? So, Nature Journal cover number two. Made some pretty fun squiggly designs there with the glue. Now, I'm going to choose what side I want to be on this cover facing out. And I kind of like, I like this light color. So I'm going to make sure that's facing out. And there we have it. <laughs> I did the same thing again. I put the advertisement on the inside of the book. Oh well, that's okay. So now we have our covers, our Nature Journal covers, and we have the inside of the book. What do you think is coming next? I think we need holes in our covers to match the inside of the book. So what I'm going to do is line up my paper just right along the edge of one of the covers and I am going to punch right through the holes that I already made. This is a really cool tool. I think you all should own one of these. You should have one. You can punch holes in all sorts of things and make all sorts of crafts. Who knows, maybe you'll make more books. So there we are, we've got those holes punched through, but this cover doesn't have the holes yet. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna use this Nature Journal cover as the template for this one. So I'm just gonna line it up and then use those holes as a guide to put the stitching holes in the other cover, like so. Now, if I've done that right and kept everything even with each other, the holes will line up between both covers and the inside. So now I'm going to put my book together and line up the holes and then set this aside because we have to have something to stitch this all together, don't we? And I showed you on the other journal that I use this natural cord called jute. Here I have a cord of it right here. Cut a piece off. And we'll use this to stitch it all up. Once I get the holes lined up. So I'm just gonna run it through one of the holes in the corner. And then I'm gonna tie a little knot. Now, when you tie your knots, 
I'm just doing like a regular overhand knot, like you would do if you're tying your shoes. And when you do your knot, make sure that it's not very, very tight because this book needs to open. And you need, and you can test that once you tie your knot to see if there's enough space for that book to open. And this one looks like it's pretty good, just about where I want it, so I'll leave it alone. And now I can take my stitching to the next hole and you can choose whatever side you want to go through it doesn't matter just line up your holes and I think I've got it this one's a little hard to find there we are all right I made it through now you can see if I pull it tight, it starts to tighten up there. Before we go all the way to the next hole, I want to do something to kind of lock this in place. So I've pulled it through this side and I'm out the other side. And I'm going to go back under that loop that I just made. Can you all see that okay? I'm going to show you that again this is a cool little stitch. So I came through this side and I've got the end of the twine here. I'm going to come right through back under that little loop that I made between the holes so that I kind of have like this long cord here stitching it together. And I'm going to test it again to see that it still opens just how I want it. There's enough space. Yep, opens just right. And now I'm going to go to the next hole. Now, because I've gone through that loop, I'm going to pull down here and it creates a tension and makes that a little tight. Now, because I've chosen to go through the holes on one side, I have to stay on that pattern. And I'm going to go right through on this side and come out. And I'm going to go back under like so. And I'm going to tie it. Looks all right. Let's try and open it. Feels, feels like it's opening OK. So right there, I'm just going to tie a little knot to keep that in place. Oops. So there we have a nature journal stitched together, blank pages so you can write anything you're noticing or seeing or asking questions about. This can be your tool to learn a ton of cool things and to just really have fun outside. And Amy Coyote showed you a little bit earlier, she keeps her... her um, she keeps her nature journal inside a Ziploc baggie. And that's probably a good idea because this is paper. And if it gets rained on, it's going to start to get mushy and kind of dissolve. So you want to keep it dry and you'll take care of it, want to take care of it. Now we did only three, three stitches here, just in as, as an example to show you how it worked. Like I said, this one has eight, eight stitches. And the more stitches you have, the tighter that this, this book is, and kind of the better it works. It's kind of like a spiral notebook that you can buy in a store. Now my challenge to you is to eventually, and you'll have to do a little bit of looking around, you can learn how to make your own paper. And it's really fun. It's pretty exciting and my challenge is for you to try and figure out how to make paper this summer and you can make another nature journal with maybe handmade paper that you've you've crafted from plants that grow around your house or in the forest you can use those fibers from those plants to make the paper you can also you can even use bark for the cover 
You don't even need cardboard. You can use bark from a tree to make a cover. It's super cool. My friend, Nick Netto, has a couple of books. One of them is called The Organic Artist. And he shares with us how to do that, how to make paper. And he just came out with a new book that I think you all will enjoy. It's called The Organic Artist for Kids. And that book has so many, so many cool activities in it. I think you would all really love to have that book for the summer. That's Organic Artist for Kids by Nick Netto. So he inspired me to make my nature journal actually. So my next experiment with nature journals, for me, I'm going to make paper, and then I'm going to make the covers. So again, you didn't have to go through that all with me in real time, but you can come back and watch that. And maybe you'll come up with your own ways to do it. Maybe there's something that I've done that maybe you want to leave out or add in. Like for instance, I used um, paper birch bark you could put anything on your cover. You could glue dried leaves or dried flowers. You don't have to put anything on your cover. You could draw a picture on your cover so that you know that you know this is your book and you can really make this your own. So should we try that song again? One more time. Ugh. Guitars are heavy. <laughs> All right. So remember, every every time I sing with my three companions, we sing together. My sit spot, my journal, and me. Listen for that, my three companions. Here. All right. Morning light in my sit spot brings me out to greet the day. With my three good companions, my sits by my journal and me. Chickadee in the treetops sings a sweet melody. With my three good companions, my sits by my journal and me. Peeling bark from a tree, making cups to boil tea with my three good, good, good companions. My sit spot, my journal, and me. Let's do that chorus again. My sit spot, my journal, and me. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Up next at noon, 12 o'clock p.m., we have white-tailed deer. Carrie will be joining us for some stories, for some fire time, and who knows what else, but it's going to be great. So please join us. Thanks for tuning in.